mom asked me on Instagram, what do I do to get my child to go to bed? And then after talking to her, she said that he's just so hyper at bedtime and she asked me for advice. My name is Marcela Collier. I am your Parenting with Understanding Coach and we are going to talk about bedtime behaviors. Specifically this one, when children are too hyper at bedtime. Let's talk about the difference when we get tired as adults compared when children are tired. So when adults get overtired, we're sluggish, we don't want to do anything, we, we're slow to do things. When it comes to children, to little ones, when they're overtired, they're hyper, they, they can bounce from one thing to the other, um, they could be really apparently really happy at one moment and then the next moment they're, they're crying, they're tantruming and they're just moody up and down. That's an overtired child and it looks so different to what an overtired adult looks like. That's why it could be a little bit deceiving or a little bit confusing that we see our child, we know that he's tired, we know that he needs to go to bed, but he's just jumping up and down, he's running back and forth, and it's hard to get him to brush his teeth, it's hard to get him to get into, into his pajamas, and it's hard to get him to stay in his bed. And it all goes because he's overtired. So what do you do with this? If you're having that issue that your child is just too hyper at bedtime, and especially at this time of day, I encourage you to check how many hours of sleep your child gets in a 24 hour period. Children, toddlers, five and under, they require between 11 to 13 hours of sleep a day and they might not always be the same. I have twins, they're four years old and one I know he requires more hours of sleep than the other one but that's the range. So check what is the range that your children get to sleep in a 24 hour period counting bedtime, counting naps. Now if it's within that age range Think about maybe, maybe he's overtired at bedtime because he needs one more hour. Maybe he's not getting enough, he's getting 10 hours. In this mommy's case, the one that I was telling you about, her child is getting 10 hours of sleep a day. She's setting a good day. It is very obvious here that at bedtime, he is hyper. He is hyper because he's overtired. Avoid your child to get to that point, the overtiredness point. We want them to be tired for them to be able to fall asleep, but not so tired that they're fighting to go to sleep. If they're not taking naps, maybe they could take a little 15 minute power nap and that would take the overtiredness off of them at bedtime. Or maybe move up their bedtime, start a little earlier. That could help you with this little piece. Okay, let's talk about the next thing. Children need a natural transition from one thing to the other, especially when it comes to changes in routine, going from the day activities to the night activities. So if it is getting closer to bedtime, if it is after dinner, it is closer to bedtime. Even if it's still not dark outside because we are entering the summer, you could start setting the ambience or the environment for bedtime. Once my twins are done with their dinner, they play a little bit more, but then right before their bath time, I try to make everything a little bit darker. I'm setting the environment for bedtime. They go take a bath, they come out, we get in the pajamas, and their brain starts to make the switch from activity, action, to wind down. Some children need a bigger transition window than others. In my twins case, I know that one falls asleep really quick. The other one needs a little more TLC to go to sleep. So the other one, I'm able to say, okay, good night, a little prayer, a kiss, and then tuck him in, and he's done, he's good with that. The other one, he likes me to rub his back and to tickle his hand. He requires a little bit more. And it has to do too with their love language. If your child's love language is physical affection, 
he might need extra cattles than the one that the love language is just words of affirmation or, or quality time, right? So not all temperaments are the same and your children don't transition the same even though they're twins or they're siblings, even though you try to do the same thing for all of your children, they have different personalities and they have different needs. If you've been following me for a while, if you are a parenting with understanding user, you know that every single behavior communicates a need. And that time that your child might be demanding for extra kisses, extra hugs, and all those things, they're communicating a need to you. And it could be like, I need to connect with you before you leave the bedroom. If bedtime has been a struggle for you lately, I'm going to start a teaching about bedtime, how to nail down bedtime so it goes smoothly. And I'm going to do it the parenting with understanding way. How to do it effectively in a way that it doesn't hurt your relationship with your children, but at the same time you're effective in what you're trying to accomplish. The link is here in the description down below. Go sign up and you're going to get this teaching on your email next Wednesday. If this video has been of value to you, I encourage you to give me a thumbs up and please let me know down below. Do you have bedtime battles with your children and how do they react to bedtime? Let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel every single week. I bring parenting with understanding content to help you respond with what your children exactly need. If all the instructions are a struggle, if all the instructions are pretty much you trying to drag their feet towards what you want them to do or you need them to do, you might need to understand four things about your child's defiance and it is in this video. I see you there and you're going to learn so much on what to do and how to address this behavior. Keep parenting with understanding.